Okay. <clears throat> 5.9, then we go into hyperbolic functions. And what are they? Well, they're just sums and differences of exponential functions. And uh, so we can define each one of them in terms of exponentials. So hyperbolic sine or cinch is e to the x minus e to the negative x or over 2. Hyperbolic cosine or cosh is e to the x plus e to the negative x all over 2. Hyperbolic tangent or tanch is going to be the ratio of cinch over cosh. So it works. There's a lot of identities that are exactly the same as your identities for um, the trig functions. And I've heard it said that you can really study the hyperbolics in the same way you study the trig functions. You can have a whole class dedicated to it in the same way we had a trig class. But we don't use these functions as much as the trig functions, so it turns out we're only going to spend uh, one section really studying them. Okay? All right. And then, of course, we have all the corresponding um, cosec, hyperbolic cosecant. Is just the reciprocal of cinch. And then, of course, that's just 2 all over e to the x minus e to the negative x. Um, then we have hyperbolic secant, which, of course, is 1 over cosh. And then we have hyperbolic cotangent or cough, which is 1 over tan, hyperlight tangent, so cosh over cinch. And I guess I didn't write out what hyperlight tangent was. Uh, hyperlight tangent, e to the x minus e to the negative x, all over e to the x plus e to the negative x. And then hyperbolic cough will end up being e to the x plus e to the negative x all over e to the x minus e to the negative x. Okay. Okay. Um, the graphs of these, you know, I'm not going to worry too much about them, but you should be able to just intuitively determine some of the graphs. Uh, in particular, hyperbolic cosine, which is um, the upside down version of that would be the Arch of St. Louis. So if you ever wondered, the Arch of St. Louis is, it, Louis is not a parabola, it's actually a hyperbolic. Um, in particular, then, let's consider then y equals cosh of x, which of course is e to the x plus e to the negative x all over 2. The way we want to do it is to write it as a sum. So e to the x over 2 plus e to the negative x over 2. And then in each one of these individually is just an exponential equation um, that we know how to graph. So e to the x over 2 would look like this. It would go through 1 half. And then e to the negative x is just a revolved version of that on the y-axis. And then our final graph, cosh, is just the sum of the y-coordinates of each individual set of points. Here plus here will put me about right here. Um, these two will put me at 1. This plus this will put me about right here. And then this plus this, it gets really, really close to the exponential as it goes to negative infinity and then positive infinity. So this is cosh. Okay, but like I said, I'm not going to get too carried away with that. Um, there's going to be identi identities with the hyperbolics, just like there's identities for your trig functions. Um, so section three, identities. Uh, the, most, the most fundamental one, like sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. In this uh, context, it's cosh squared x minus cinch squared x equals one. Um, we could go through and prove this. So uh, note the uh, left-hand side, cosh squared x minus cinch squared x can be rewritten 
as e to the x plus e to the negative x all over 2 squared plus, uh, or rather minus, sorry, e to the x minus e to the negative x all over 2 squared. Um, foiling the numerator, I'd have e to the x times e to the x. You add the exponent, so e to the 2x. And then uh, the inner and outer, e to the x times e to the negative x, x minus x is 0. So you just get 1 for the inner and 1 for the outer, so plus 2. And then the last, plus e to the negative 2x. And then downstairs, we have 4 minus uh, sort of the same thing, but with a negative in between e to the 2x minus 2 plus e to the negative 2x all over 4. Um, combine the numerators over the common denominator. Don't forget to distribute the negative. And we end up with e to the 2x minus e to the 2x is 0. Um, we'll have 2 plus 2, which is 4. And then e to the minus 2x minus e to the minus 2x, again, is 0. So 4 over 4 is 1, which is, of course, the right-hand side of the identity. Ending our proof. OK. OK, so you can do, um, uh, you probably saw these proofs for identities in, in trig class. You can do them now again for. Um, the hyperbolics and those those identities will become useful once you get into more complicated hyperbolic integrals. Um, in the meantime, let's find some rules for derivatives and integration. It turns out the rules are pretty much the same as the trig rules, except you have some negatives and positives to worry about. So, for example. Um, Recall that the derivative of cosine was negative sine. Let's look at the derivative of cosh. So to get this derivative, I just remind myself, OK, how do I take derivatives basically of exponentials? Right? So cosh is really e to the x plus e to the negative x all over 2. Um, the derivative of sum is the sum of the derivatives. So that I could really write this as the derivative with respect to x of e to the x over 2 plus the derivative with respect to x of e to the negative x over 2. The derivative e to the x um, over 2 is just e to the x over 2. The derivative of e to the x negative x over 2 is e to the negative x over 2 times the derivative of the guts, which is negative 1. So this will become minus e to the negative x over 2. Um, rewriting that with a common denominator, I got e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2. And if you look back in your notes, that's just cinch. Okay. So it's very similar to the rules for uh, the trigonometric functions, except the signs are a bit off as to what we're used to. So um, let's just summarize the rules. The derivative with respect to x of cinch is going to be cosh. The derivative with respect to x of cosh is going to be cinch. The derivative with respect to x of hyperbolic tangent is going to be hyperbolic secant squared. The derivative with respect to x of hyperbolic cosecant is going to be, and now all the negatives will appear, negative hyperbolic cosecant hyperbolic cotan. The derivative of hyperbolic secant is going to be negative hyperbolic secant hyperbolic tan. And finally, the derivative with respect to x of hyperbolic cotangent is going to be negative hyperbolic cosecant squared. Then as soon as you know all the derivatives, you know all the integrals, so we'll have integrals uh, integral of hyperbolic cosine is cinch, etc. Okay. So the three main ones, cosh, cinch, and tanch, are the ones we should know.
well, not even this. We would have to do like a U sub for this. We could do that really quick. Um, the integral of uh, tangent then is the integral of uh, cinch over cosh. Then you do a U sub for cosh. So du is cinch. dx is basically just the numerator. So this will be the integral of du over u, which is ln of u. In other words, ln of absolute value of cosh of x plus c. OK, so that's good stuff. Uh, how do we evaluate these things? Well, I uh, don't really have any of the uh, like reference angles memorized. What you're going to do is just straight subs and then probably convert into exponentials. So, for example, the cosh of 0, I know, is from the graph from before, is just 1. But we could also convert it back into its exponential form. And then evaluate it that way. Um, Sometimes you won't be able to do that, obviously. For example, hyperbolic secant of 1. You know, hyperbolic secant is just 1 over cosh. So this would be 2 all over e to the 1 plus e to the negative 1. Multiply top and bottom by e, you get 2e all over e squared plus 1. And then if you put that in your calculator, um, you get about 0.648. So, like I said, you can kind of, uh, if it's an easy one, you can kind of use the definition a little bit harder. You may want to plug it in and then simplify and then put it into your calculator. But I'm working with, this, with the exponential definitions. Okay, um, taking derivatives of these things. In this case, I'll be doing the chain rule. So I take the derivative of the outer parts and start tacking on the derivatives of the guts. So the derivative of secant is uh, negative hyperbolic secant hyperbolic uh, tan. And then times the derivative of the inner part, which is 10x. Let's look at another one. Here's 25. So this is uh, has basically three parts to it. If you want to do this with uh, u substitutions, you may have learned that method. You can do that. That's fine. So the outer part, um, you know, is ln of u. Um, then u is tan of z, and then z is x over 2. And you just take the derivative of those and tack them all together. So what? Uh, say y is the ln of u, and then u is the hyperbolic tangent of z, and then z is the innermost part, x over 2. And you just take the derivative straight across, and that'll give you your answer. So y prime is 1 over u times the derivative of u, which in this case will be hyperbolic secant squared of z, and then times the derivative of z, which in this case will be 1 half. And then you do your back substitutions. So 1 all over u is 1 all over hyperbolic tangent of z. z is um, x over 2 times hyperbolic secant squared of z. So again, z is x over 2, and then times 1 half. So we could rewrite that as hyperbolic secant squared of x over 2 all over 2 times hyperbolic tangent of x over 2. So I'm off the page there, sorry about that. Um, there's a ton of identities in there that will allow you to rewrite this thing. I'm not going to get too worried about it, but if you do see a different answer in the back of the book, it's because they've used identities.
Um, let's look at doing some uh, integrals then. So 47, we have the integral of hyperbolic sine of 1 minus 2x dx. We're going to need a u sub. So u is 1 minus 2x. And then du is negative 2 dx. So dx is negative du over 2. Go through and do your substitutions. So I got the integral of hyperbolic sine of u times du, which is dx, which is now negative du over 2. Factor out the negative 1 half. Right, I got the integral of hyperbolic sine of u du. And then that's easy. That's just hyperbolic cosine. And then back substitute. Okay. Uh, let's look at one more, and then we'll carry on to the inverse hyperbolics. So this is 55. I'm a bit more intimidating looking. Hyperbolic cosecant of 1 over x times hyperbolic cotangent of 1 over x all over x squared dx. Okay, so what I'd like to do then is to get rid of the 1 over x's somehow, hopefully. So I'll let u equal 1 over x. And of course, 1 over x is x to the negative 1. So my du, my differential, bring down the negative 1. So you get x, subtract the old exponent by 1, negative x squared, dx. Solve for dx. So my dx must equal um, negative x squared du. So I'll have a nice cancellation with the denominator. Right. So I end up with the integral of uh, hyperbolic cosecant of u times hyperbolic cotan of u all over x squared times dx, which is now negative x squared du. Um, allow this cancellation to happen, and you get negative integral hyperbolic cosecant u hyperbolic cotan of u du. And then uh, which uh, hyperbolic function has a derivative cosecant cotan negative, and that will just be cosecant of u, where u, of course, is 1 over x. Okay, so um, just like with trig functions, we dealt with the inverse trigs um, not long after we dealt with the trig functions. And uh, we want to deal with the inverse hyperbolics here as well. So because the hyperbolics are defined in terms of exponentials, their inverse forms will be in terms of logarithms. Okay. So for example, y equals cosh of x, which we can rewrite as e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2. Its inverse form, because the exponential's inverse is a logarithm, its inverse form is going to look like a logarithm. And you could look in the book to find uh, how that works. But it's, it's basically just you know replacing the x's and the y's and then solving out for the uh, other variable. And anyways, you'll end up with y equaling um, the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. And I don't expect you to have these memorized. You'll just look them up whenever whenever you need them. Okay. So uh, example five, let's take a look at that, I guess. And uh, this is an example where you're actually using hyperbolic functions. Uh, well, even before we, we get there, um, so, sorry, I should make this clear. This, this is, guy right here is a hyperbolic cosh. Okay, so I don't think I made that. That's not obvious from what I've written here. This would be the inverse of this thing. So it's hyperbolic cos. Okay. Um, before we do example five, let's just play around maybe with finding uh, its derivative. 
so 120 um, show the fact that the derivative with respect to x of this thing, cosh inverse of x, is going to end up being one of these uh, sort of algebraic, radical, um, rational things. OK, so what we're going to do is work with this form. Oops, I just hit my camera, so that's going to be screwed up. Okay, so we're taking the derivative of this, and we should be able to get this from it. So note then the derivative with respect to x of this guy is really just the derivative of this guy. So I'm working with the ln of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. Okay, so for lns, it's 1 all over the guts times the derivative of the guts. So it's 1 all over this stuff x plus the square root of x squared minus 1 times the derivative of that stuff, right? So what's that derivative? It's the derivative of x is 1, and then plus, if you think of this as a rational exponent of 1 half, you're bringing down the 1 half, and then you're going x squared minus 1 now to the uh, 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half, and then the chain rule says you have to take the derivative of this part, so I'll give you 2x in there. Okay, so I'll rewrite that. I have 1 all over x plus the square root of x squared minus 1 times 1 um, plus 2x all over 2 square root x squared minus 1, ultimately. So the 2s will cancel, and you'll have x all over the square root of x squared minus 1. I'll find a common denominator and combine these two things together. So I need to multiply, pretend this is 1 over 1, and then multiply top and bottom by square root x squared minus 1. So that will end up giving you um, 1 all over x times the square root of x squared minus 1, so sorry, plus that thing, um, times what? Well, square root x squared minus 1 plus x all over the common denominator of x squared minus 1. And then clearly these guys will divide out, and you're just left with what we wanted, 1 all over the square root of x squared minus 1, which is what you're trying to show. The derivative of this is that. OK, um, so you know, like I said, when, in general, I won't expect you to have these inverse hyperbolics memorized, or um, even their derivatives and integrals. You'll just look those up, look those up in tables. Let's look at the trace x problem. So where do these uh, functions pop up? They pop up when you're dealing with uh, cables a lot of times. Here we have the trace x problem. Um, basically, you're pulling a boat at the end of a, a rope, and you can uh, uh, model the curve that's being traced out by the boat using this guy right here, y equals secant inverse of x over a minus the square root of a squared minus x squared. Okay. So what is uh, this thing modeling again? You have a person on the shore or the, the dock. So this is my person at position 0, comma, we'll call it y sub 1. It's my person. And this person is pulling a boat on a rope, so it's tailing behind him or her. And this point right here is tracing out this curve here. Okay? And it'll be kind of a curvy thing like this. Um, The length of the rope is 20 feet. I'm going to put that guy right there. So A is going to be the length of the rope. Um, they want you to determine, in, in part A, 
um, the distance a person must walk to bring the boat five feet from the deck. Okay, so the key to this is to kind of make a little triangle here. And then we could uh, figure out um, this distance y sub 1, which is how far the person must walk in order to get the boat um, 5 feet away from the, the, the deck here. Okay, so... Um, if you extract that triangle and take a closer look at it, you could put the sides in terms of x. Um, so in particular then, the x value here is going to be on that leg of the triangle. The distance from here to here is going to be the uh, length of the rope. Right? So. I don't know why I put 20 over here. Seems like an error on my part. Let me look it up. Where are we? On section. 5.9. Yeah, so it is that that was right. That's all right. It's okay, it's fine. But uh, when you when you pull it out, so initially the boat would be down here at 20, and then we're pulling it in. Um, but this will be 20 as well. Okay, it's just the distance from here to the boat. Okay. So my my picture is completely out of whack. But hopefully, if you take a look in the book on page 370, you get a better idea. Sorry about that. Okay, so anyways, if we extract this re this uh, triangle, um, we know that this side is 20, uh, this side is x. So this side over here must be 20 squared minus x squared. And then um, the distance the person must walk will be the y value, which could be given by this formula, plus this additional value, which is given by this guy right here. Okay, so um, we want the x value to be 5, and uh, then what is the y value? So y, y1, which is going to be this distance to the person, or how far the person must walk from his beginning, beginning of his journey, will be um, y, the y value, up to here, which is given by the formula A hyperbolic secant, inverse of x over a minus the square root of a squared minus x squared, but then you have to tack on this additional part from here to here, which is this part right here. Okay. So plus then um, the square root of 20 squared minus x squared, where a is the 20. Okay. So what happens is that these guys will cancel out and your, your formula will just be 20 hyperbolic secant inverse of x all over 20. And then to find how far the person must walk, you plug 5 into this formula. So y1 of 5 will be 20 times the hyperbolic secant inverse of 5 over 20, and you go to your calculator to figure that out. And you probably have to use your formulas from, from the book with the logarithms but it's about 41.27 feet is what I got at the end of the day. Okay, I think that's about it. Let's see if there's anything else here. Yeah, that'll, that'll do it for this section. Okay, thanks for watching.